Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Hello, Cape artists, and welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. In our episode today, we are painting in plain air. What does that mean? Well, it's actually a French phrase that means painting outside. So the job today is going to be to bring all of your painting supplies outside and paint a picture of nature. So whatever kind of nature that you can find. And if you can't find a place that has a lot of nature, you can do what I did. If you look behind me, the scene behind me is actually the part of nature that I'm going to be painting, but there are some man-made things that are in the way like there's a car over here and there's a big board that's for playing volleyball and there's a big wood shack for the wood that we keep our house warm in the winter so I'm going to just not include those in my piece of artwork I'm going to focus on the trees and the grass and the bushes and all the other beautiful things that are back there so if you're like me and you live in a place that has nature and man-made objects just don't add the man-made objects. It's fine with me if it's fine with you. Nobody will know except you and I anyways. So your art's gonna be outside today. You're gonna be painting in plain air. Plus, we're going to be learning about a really cool group of Americans that began this sort of um, nature painting outside sort of movement. They're called the Hudson River School. And they painted a long time ago when the Americans were still moving west and discovering all of the states that are on the western side of our country. So you and I today painting in plain air, learning about the Hudson River School of Artists, and hopefully having a piece of artwork that is fantastic whenever you're all done. So let's learn a little bit, grab your creativity, grab your supplies, and we're gonna be heading outside in just a moment. American art is a complicated topic. What exactly is American art? And does it include art created by indigenous tribes that roamed the country before America was America? Or does it begin once America became America? American art history stretches from the earliest indigenous cultures to the more recent globalization of contemporary art. Centuries before the first European colonizers, Native American peoples had crafted ritual and utilitarian objects that reflected the natural environment of their beliefs. After the arrival of Europeans, artists looked to European tendencies in portraiture and landscape paintings to craft representations of the new land. But it wasn't until the middle of the 19th century with the Hudson River School that American artists were considered to have launched their own art movement. The American landscape itself was the primary focus of the Hudson River School painters. Westward expansion filled the untamed countryside with the symbolism of our country's promised prosperity and limitless resources. The terrain provided an alternative to European culture and history, and it became a picturesque, patriotic and inspirational theme. This loosely connected group of painters explored the nation and then returned to their New York studios to paint large-scale works that thrilled their audiences and celebrated the awesome power of nature and the progress of man. Artists like Thomas Cole filled the landscape with symbolism. He suggested that these natural scenes could be transformed into meaningful stories as well as exciting experiences for the viewer. With their careful attention to realism and ability to create distance on a flat surface, their resulting canvas would be appreciated by everyone. Alrighty, Cape Artist, so since I was painting outside, I totally forgot to get a photograph of the supplies that we were going to be needing. So there's a list here for you and I'll explain what you need. First we need some paints, so I'm using acrylic paints, however tempera paints would work okay for this too, but if you do have acrylics they would, probably would be best. We also will need some brushes, I made sure I had at least one wide brush and one thin brush, but whatever you have will work fine. A cup of water to rinse out our brush. We need a paint plate. I just used a paper plate because then it's easy to clean up. I just throw it away. 
Um, we're also going to need some art paper, of course, to draw on and then to paint on. I used a clipboard to hold my paper. Since you're painting outside, you want something that will hold your paper so it doesn't blow away. If you don't have a clipboard, that's okay. You can tape your art paper to a book or to something else, maybe a table, um, so that it doesn't blow away while you're working. And then finally, a pencil for drawing. So this piece of artwork is a realistic piece of artwork, meaning that it is something in real life or painting nature as we see it. However, you want to make sure you give yourself some grace. So if your picture ends up not looking exactly like the scene that you're looking at, it's absolutely okay. It's nothing to be worried about. It just means that your interpretation and the way that you create artwork is a little bit different than the way Mother Nature creates nature. So it is not a huge problem. Give yourself some grace and allow your art to develop the way that you are going to create it. Because after all, there's only one you and the way that you create art is special and different from everyone else. And that's the way it should be. So. Let's see what we can get ourselves into today and begin our piece of artwork in just a moment. All right, so here I am outside. You're gonna come outside too in just a moment. And when you get there, you're going to make sure you have all of the supplies that you need already there waiting for you. And you're going to put yourself in a position where you are looking at something beautiful, something in nature that you think is just lovely and beautiful and you think other people would like to see too. And remember, as you're drawing and sketching in your idea, you do not have to be perfect. Um, this is going to get painted anyway, so you can always paint over any little mistakes. It can just be a quick sketch just to get your idea from your eyes to your paper so the rest of us can see it. Um, and finally, make sure you exclude any man-made objects that happen to be in the way. All right, so now I'm going to pause from the art creating for just a moment, and I'm going to get my paint palette set up. So I'm just opening up my little um, jars of paint here, and I'm just putting a little pile of each of the colors that I think I'm going to need. So far I have some white and some black, some yellow and some green. I'll add some blue to the mix. Hey, that blue matches my sweatshirt. And then maybe some brown. I don't think I'm going to need red or purple. In addition to my paints, I have a couple of brushes, some wide and some thin brushes, and kind of a medium one too, but I have some different options here. I have a cup of water, and I think I'm ready to start painting. So I'm going to use my paintbrush, and I'm going to start with whatever is the furthest away. So when I look at my picture, I'm trying to find what object or thing is the furthest away. So I actually made a mistake here. I started mixing up the color for the tree trunks, but I forgot that the sky is actually the furthest thing away. So right before I get started here, I remember, whoops, hey, I need to paint the sky first because the sky is actually the furthest thing away. So I'm going to switch to some white and some blue to get that perfect sky color. So there's two ways to create the colors that you need. One way is to mix on your little paint palette, which I do quite often. And then the other way is to mix right on your paper, which is actually what I'm doing now. I paint my lighter color on first, so I had already painted this area white, and now I'm adding a bit of blue to it so that it changes it to be light blue. Anytime you add white to a color, it's called creating a tint and this tint is going to be a very light blue, which should look like the blue sky that's actually in the sky today. When you're painting, make sure you actually look at the sky and see if it is the same shade of blue as mine, or maybe yours might be darker, or maybe even lighter, or maybe more gray, just depends on the day and the clouds. So up next, we're going to rinse out our paintbrush really well. I like to dry off my paintbrushes too, just to get some of that extra water out of it before I move on to my next color. And now I'm on to whatever is next in my picture, whatever's next coming closest. And for me, that's going to be the trees. So I had quite a realization today as I was sitting outside painting this. And my realization was, 
these trees are not actually brown. So if you look at the trees, if you don't look at my painting for a second, and look at the trees that are back there that I'm painting, those tree trunks are way more gray than they are brown. So I needed to make sure that I mixed in some black and some white into my brown paint to make it more of a grayish brown instead of a brown brown. So really pay close attention. Don't go by memory. Make sure you're actually looking and taking note of what you see so that when you actually paint it, you're making it the color that it actually is, not the color you think it should be. So next up is the grass painting. So again, I need to make sure that I am painting what I see, not what I think it should be. So I'm not only using green here, but I'm going to use a mixture of green and yellow and white and maybe even a bit of black, maybe even a bit of blue. So the way that I determine what color things are, I kind of squint a little bit and I think about the color and see if I see it. So I squint my eyes and think green. Where do I see green? Squint my eyes and think yellow. Do I see any yellow squint my eyes and think black do I see any black and that really helps me to determine where I should put these colors in addition do you notice how I'm painting now I'm not painting with smooth brush strokes I'm using a tapping motion that's because grass is spiky it's not smooth so I'm trying to create some of that visual texture we've talked about before in my grass painting as well I'm trying not to make it smooth and even but instead I want it to look spiky like it actually really is. So let's see how this comes out. Up next, using a very similar technique, I'm going to paint in a bunch of those leaves. So you can see between my trees, I have a lot of brush and vines and just lots of green growing back there. And I'm so glad to see it after the long, cold winter. So glad to see everything green again. So I'm gonna use a similar technique using my tapping motion and again, using my squinting eye technique to see where it looks darker or brighter or more yellow or what colors I can see in there. And of course, just like most of you, as I'm moving along, I see little mistakes or places where I can improve. So I'm not just sticking to those background pieces. As you can see now, I'm adding a bit more to the green grass. I've already fixed up a couple of mistakes that happened in the tree trunks, went back to the evergreen. So it is okay to go back and forth and fix things up or make corrections, as long as you're mostly working from the background towards the foreground, the things that are closest to you. Okay, and now we're moving on to the gravel. So there was some gravel, and you can actually see it right there by my toes. Um, there are some stones and gravel that are in front of all that green. So I had to mix up a gray. I didn't have a gray paint, so I used black and white to make my gray. And again, I'm putting it in sort of on the rough side, sort of a tapping motion, similar to the grass, but also a little bit smoother. I wanted it to look different. Um, and then I'm going to go back and definitely add some more dark areas, some more light areas, let those two mix together and then use my squinting technique again. Is there anything else I need to add in that area? Should there be any blue in there? Maybe, maybe not. Should I show some yellow? Would it be appropriate to add some green in there? So just however you see it, whatever colors you see in that space, that's the colors that you should include in yours. So the day that I was painting, the sun was peeking in and out behind some clouds. And when the sun did peek out, I saw these beautiful rays of sun that streamed across my grass and my gravel that's in the front there, and also hit on some of the trees and the brush and the bushes in the back. So I decided to add some of that, but I felt yellow was a little bit too bright to add on its own. So instead of just yellow, I mixed a bit of brown in with it, a little bit of yellow, just to kind of tone it down, and I think it turned out so perfect and that color was actually really similar to the color that I needed for my bird box that's on this tree that was one man-made object I decided to leave in my picture um, I just liked how it looked there and I thought it would add a little bit of interest so I did leave one little man-made object hanging on the tree here And then 
once I finished that, I just needed a little bit of touch-ups. I really th felt I needed some additional texture and lights and dark, some extra contrast in the brush that was back in the forest. So I'm just again looking at my painting, looking at the scene that I'm looking at, just seeing if there's anything I want to add or change before I call it finished. So this video is probably about 17 minutes long, however in real life it probably took me 45 minutes to an hour to actually paint this. So although I've sped up the video here for you to be able to learn and see, when you actually get outside take your time. It's so interesting and so different to experience painting outside in nature and there are some difficulties, some things you might run into that do make it a little bit harder but it's also really cool to feel the sun on your face and feel that warmth and know that you're painting something in nature and you're actually recording history there will never be another day where that scene looks exactly like it does today so you're actually recording history whenever you paint in plain air like this pretty cool to think of it that way and I bet that's how the Hudson River School artists were thinking about it too so I hope you enjoyed this experience. I hope you enjoyed being outside and learning something new and maybe seeing a part of nature differently than you've looked at it before. And I hope to see you back here next time at the Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.